What's up? It's your girl Drama Queen coming to you with another video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning visitor, thank you so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. Now that we got that out of the way, this is a video that I've been wanting to do. I've actually shot it a couple times. I didn't like the video that I shot and so um, I'm attempting to do this again. Um, <laughs> and it's weird because I got some additional information from when I originally tried to shoot this. So um, before I just dive into the video, I received a phone call probably about a week and a half to two weeks ago from someone um, telling me about this post that I'm getting ready to read to you. Um, someone posted this on Facebook that is a friend of the family. Didn't even know. I've been in communication with her since, but I had no idea. So I want to share this with you to kind of start my story and my journey um, for today's video. So this says, this is not a repost. It is my own story. So those of you who know me, you know that I never post my business on Facebook. However, in the hope that it may help someone else or at least help you understand the disease, here goes. I was recently diagnosed with celiac disease, not gluten intolerance, not gluten sensitivity, full-blown celiac disease. Anytime gluten enters my body, it tries to cause cancer, so I must avoid it at all costs. There are people who go gluten-free thinking that it's healthier, not necessarily so. Gluten is a necessary protein, so it also leaves a deficiency in my diet as well. Some think it's a fad, and maybe for some it is, but please, if you know anyone who, is, who has celiac, please take them seriously. Brow, barley, rye, oats, wheat. We can never have anything that includes any of those items in any form. Sounds simple enough, right? Not, I come up to find that, uh, I come to find out that gluten is present in mostly everything. Foods liquor, makeup, toothpaste, lotions, soap, shampoo, seasonings, paper straws, McDonald's french fries. Yeah, that's where the wheat, yeah, where's the wheat in that? The oil. And most every other restaurant too. So if you ask me to come to your house for dinner, I must ask about every ingredient that you use. If you want to kiss me, I need to know if and what you've been drinking. If you shake my hand, I have to wash it because I don't know what kind of soap, lotion, hand sanitizer, etc. that you've used. Yes, it is a lot. I probably had more bad days than good because I keep getting cross-contaminated. Pots and pans and dishes touching stuff and people, etc. For the rest of my life, this is my life. I will have to read the ingredients on everything that I ingest. The tricky part of that is that they disguise gluten under various names. So many times I end up having to Google the masquerading names even after reading all of the ingredients. Again, I'm not acting funny if I need to see you prepare your food or ask you repeatedly exactly what's in it or I ask you if I can prepare and bring my own food. I pray that possibly, I pray that this possibly explains celiac disease for those of you who may have never heard of it or don't know the seriousness of it. If you read this post in its entirety, I truly appreciate you. Pray for me, please. It was heartbreaking to read that message because I know the struggle that I went through being diagnosed with celiac several years ago. It still bothers me. Like she said, there's cross-contamination. In 2017, I had to have a surgery which solidified the fact that I'll never have kids. Why? Because of celiac disease. Just as she is trying to make people aware, I was trying to do the same thing when I decided to be a participant in season six of 60 Days In. That was my goal. I had read many stories and I shared those stories with the production team of why I wanted to be a part of 60 Days In to bring awareness about celiac disease, other autoimmune diseases, and food allergies that people may have when they are incarcerated in a jail. That was my goal. Now, 
I'm a little pissed off and a little perturbed because I feel like I gave a network, a production team, I gave them everything that they needed to paint a picture of this disease and how it is life changing. I did that. Why? I hadn't had a menstrual cycle in 10 years. Why? Because of celiac disease. I lost over 90 pounds when I was diagnosed with celiac disease. My hair fell out. My hair used to be real long and pretty and thick. My hair had to be cut up to this much because of celiac disease. When I read about people in jail, because originally when I signed up to be on this magical show that I didn't know what the show was, and they told me, I said, absolutely, no, not, I'm good, I'm good, I'm not volunteering to go to jail. But I prayed about it, and God led me to do my research, and I read many stories. Just, just because, as I'm talking to you, I'm going to just pull one, pull one uh, up on my phone, because there are several um, stories that I read about being an inmate. So here's one. This was from May 17th, 2019. Keep in mind that I went in before May 17th, 2019. So this was done after I went in. This is gluten, prison food, almost killed a New York inmate with celiac. Um, do prison inmates with celiac have access to safe food? October the 3rd, 2011. Jail, prison, celiac. My buddy interest in celiac disease in the prison system, January 6, 2012, May 29th, 2019. I told the prison guards I have celiac disease and they fed me gluten. Um, there also was a court case. Um, it says in the United States District Court. Is this coming up? Here we go. Um, District of Colorado. So, this is about celiac. Plankton suffers celiac disease and in connection with the following events, he asserts three constitutional claims primarily relating to the provision of his food by the staff. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to go through everything because just as I can look it up on Google, so can you. So, the reason for today's video is... I've had several questions, comments, and concerns, and so we'll start with the things that don't necessarily affect me first. People want to know, is the show 60 Days In real? Well, I am here to tell you that there's no script. There's no cut, do it again, except for maybe when you're in the room giving your, your uh, interview. Um, there's no predetermined nothing. It's jail. It's jail. Now, are there some things that they probably manipulated to try to make um, things more entertaining? Of course. So, question one, is 60 Days in real? Yes, it absolutely is. Now, the follow-up to that is... How does editing play a role in the show? <laughs> editing plays a huge role in the show. Not only does editing play a huge role in the show, but what I'm learning, not just from my show, but talking to other people and researching, is that when they select a candidate, especially for the show that I was on, when they select a candidate for the show, they're looking at multiple things. Is this person you know, a verbal person? Are they confrontational? Are they going to get along with the other people that are there with them? Do their personalities match? Do they clash? There were several things that we had to do. Personality assessments. Talk to a um, psychologist. I also had to submit documentation from my doctor's office so they can know everything that there is to know before I went in. So editing plays a huge part. And editing and the creativity that is associated with editing is why I am doing this video today. 
Um, I've seen several, as I look up my notes, I've seen several, and I will be putting screenshots so you can see this, see them, um, messages or, or comments that people did not think that it was at all possible for me to have had celiac and went to jail. So they think that either A, I just made up something. I was like, shit, you know what, I'm about to be on national TV, I'm going to make up something. No, I, no. Um, they also, I've heard that there's no way that the production team would put her safety in jeopardy so she couldn't have told them. They didn't know. Well, if they knew, if production knew, why didn't they say something? So she couldn't have had celiac disease. So, as uh, my girls say on the Atlanta Housewives, baby girl, baby boy, I got receipts. Now, uh, let's start here. I'll do that one last because that's kind of a big one. Okay. So, I'm not going to put this particular email up because there's some, some things in here that I can't put up. But I'm going to read uh, parts of it. Um, good morning. This message was sent on February the 26th, 2019 at 11.54 by me. Um, good morning. I wanted to send an email to follow up to our conversation yesterday. Thankfully, I did get a little more sleep last night and this morning. With the huge cross-contamination risk, jail, food, uh, me closing my business for a couple months and taking time off work before my contract expires, I just don't know if I can make those sacrifices. Um, let me scroll down in it. Um... So, I said, if this is something that you guys cannot do, I definitely understand and I will have no bad feelings. If it is not something that can be done, I only ask that you please keep me in mind for future opportunities that Lucky 8 may have that would not compromise my health. Let me know your thoughts. That was on February the 26th. Um, that's Okay, next one is, do I have a date on that? Um, okay, so on February the 25th, 2019, at 3.19 a.m., I sent an email because I had nightmares. I had already committed to doing this, but I had nightmares because of celiac. So, I sent a message at 3.19 in the morning. Hello, I know it's late slash early, however, I have... To do, I, I have some concerns that actually woke me up out of my sleep. We can discuss later today, but I wanted to give you a heads up. Got a response at 7.55 in the morning. Um, hi, good morning, Shanice. Of course, let's definitely find some time to speak today. Emily can help us get something set up, and I'll see if our executive producer can join. Let us know a few times that work. The last one, because I'm not going to keep reading all these emails and putting them all up here, but this is this is the key one right here. So people that think that the production team didn't know, they knew. Here's an email I received on March the 25th, 2019 at 3.26 p.m. Hi, Shanice. Do you have time for a quick call today at 4 p.m. Eastern or any times tomorrow? As discussed, Jeff and I wanted to check in and talk about your experience with celiac disease and what we might need to know as we continue to explore what this means for your participation in the project. Thank you. March 25th. There's several more, but those are just the key ones that I want to concentrate on. So, <clears throat> I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I am not one that really cares what people say because people are going to have opinions. They're like buttholes. Everybody has an opinion. People are going to like you, love you, hate you. And it doesn't really affect me. I don't care. The reason I'm doing this video, though, is because I feel like my story was not accurately portrayed. And the reason why I opened myself up to be so vulnerable in a situation to volunteer to go to jail is because I wanted to bring awareness. I had those conversations with them. What they didn't show is we had video um, Skype interviews <clears throat> early on in the process. That was one of the things I talked about. The funny thing is I feel like the network had the opportunity to bring light to a situation that affects 
people. Celiac affects one in 100 people, but there are other diseases, autoimmune diseases, food allergies that people that go to jail suffer with. Just because you go to jail, that does not mean that you are guilty. And even if you are, you should not have your constitutional rights taken away from you. Okay? So that's another reason I'm doing the video is because I feel like they had an opportunity and they didn't take it. Several months ago, I was angry. I put a video out. Um, it's still out there um, under wraps for now. <laughs> for now. Um, I put a video out and I, I basically just said, shame on you, a &E. Shame on you, 60 Days In. And I had some conversations with them. It's funny that I could put a video out and in less than 12 hours I get phone calls and let's meet, let's talk. Let's, let's communicate about your concerns. And it wasn't just me that had concerns. It was other people. And the concerns were very similar. We'll just leave it at that. Um, here we are several months later. You know, I'm a type of person I believe in action. I don't care what you say. It's what you do. You say you want to make a change. You say you see where the error of your ways are. You say that I was a huge... Um, value as a participant in season six or 60 days in and when I let you know it didn't look that way so I actually appreciate them doing that because now that has put a fire under my ass for me to really bring awareness to a disease that has changed my life I have no reason to go on national TV. I'm an educator. I'm a business owner. I have no need to go on, on national TV and make up some shit. I don't. This disease. <laughs> it has affected every aspect of my life. I was just thinking about a scene from <laughs> the jail when that I was eating an apple and I said, I, I hate the skin of apples. It's not that I hate, they didn't finish. See, they want to pick and choose because from the get go, see black women, I agree with this. We are the most disrespected, underappreciated species that there is. When I said that, I read a little bit about the deficiencies with the uh, post that I read to you earlier. When you are you have celiac disease, you are severely deficient of vitamins. So I'm severely vitamin D deficient. At one point, they had me on 50,000 units a week to try to get my vitamin D levels up. I'm scared now with COVID because they say you have to have high vitamin D. When you are, you have celiac disease, your body is deficient. They can't absorb those nutrients. If you know anything about fruits and vegetables, especially fruits, a lot of the nutrients are in the skin of the fruit. I wasn't being a bitch when I was saying, oh, I don't like apples. And I, and I get, you guys didn't see everything. It's not that I'm being a bitch about my food touching. I cannot have it. And I saw somebody was like, she wasn't even sick. Oh, I was very sick. There was times that I was, just to be completely honest, I had it coming out of both ends because I had to eat something so I knew that there was going to be cross-contamination. Now, I saw a question, why didn't she just get commissary? I did. I got commissary... I got commissary nine days after I entered. They didn't really show a lot of my story after the nine days because... I didn't get the food. I didn't complain about the food. Not only did I have commissary from Etowah County Detention Center, Angel, the girl that I peed for, and everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe you paid, you peed for her. Which I didn't know is that she knew that I had celiac disease and I was told that she had access to special commissary. And on that special commissary that I was able to get because of the relationship with her, I was able to get a lot of gluten-free stuff and get stuff that people in the jail didn't have. Matter of fact, give you a little story that y'all didn't know. I ordered some cookies. They were supposed to be gluten-free cookies from this site. Said gluten-free everything. Now, this is when I forgot I was in jail. So, they send me the cookies and they're not gluten-free. The first thing I want to do is call. Like, why didn't you send me some cookies? And I'm like, hold on. You're an inmate. You're in jail. 
So I start thinking like an inmate. I got stuff that don't nobody else in here have. I can sell this for whatever I needed. At that point, when I got those cookies, they didn't have any Sprites. So I didn't have any soda for the week because I didn't order any of my peach or my strawberry or whatever that week. So I acted like an inmate and I traded it and got what I needed. So there were a lot of moments that were not shown because they, when you're doing shows like that, you don't know how they're going to, what box they're going to put you in. You don't. So people ask me, would I recommend you doing a reality show? We'll talk about the no's. I'm, I'm at 50-50. Depends on your personality. Depends on why you want to do it. Why I say I'm 50-50 is no, because you're allowing someone else to tell your story. You may give them, just an example, you may give them 10 chapters to cover, 10 things to cover. But they decide that they want to cover one and not cover the good and the bad of that. Just cover the bad. So if you're okay with giving somebody else the opportunity to create your story, to manipulate you, to fit into the box that they want you to be in, by all means, go do a reality show. Um, the other thing I'll say about the no and the yes is it depends on your motivation. People have asked me, well, would you do another show? And I really, I don't know. But if I did my motivation would be different. This time, I went on a show, <laughs> quit my job, closed my business, got sick as hell while I was in jail, tried to tell them what was going on. They wouldn't do anything. When I came back, I was diagnosed with something else. So, it just depends on that. Um... My motivation was to bring awareness. My motivation was to help. The two things that I told the production team from the get-go, but you never saw any of those videos and you never saw any of the proof that I did the things that I said I was going to do. The two things that I said I wanted to do. One, I cannot have kids. So I said I wanted to mentor the ladies that had kids and that were pregnant. I did that multiple times multiple times the other thing that I said I wanted to do was bring awareness bring awareness that hey you have people that are in your jail that may have these health issues these autoimmune diseases these allergies you need to to recognize those because according to the things and stories that I've read it's not happening there's a whole court case so I wanted to bring awareness not only to that but bring awareness that hey if you have these issues going on, you might not want to break the law because they might not give a rat's ass about you. Funny thing is, in real life, far from a complainer. <laughs> the other day, I was um, working on a project. I was talking to a young lady. And I just kind of shared with her the things that I've gone through in life, health-wise. And she's like, wow, I, I had no idea. Like, you always smiling. You happy-go-lucky. You always trying to cheer people up. Yeah, because at the end of the day, nobody cares about the shit you're going through because they have their own shit that they're going through. And I realized and recognized that. And so for me, I was so angry and pissed off that a show would edit in such a way and only show a few days of my story that made me look like something that is completely completely off the wall and not true a lot of people that are in my situation would have never even volunteered to go to jail something that my sister said she's like you you can't do everything that everybody else can do because you had these ailments these illnesses and ailments okay so, it ain't stop nothing. I look at Chadwick Boseman. I, I love, I hate the fact that he is no longer here. But I love the fact that he really suffered in silence. Because he didn't want people feeling sorry for him. He didn't want people fussing over him. Thinking maybe he was lying. He's using it as an excuse. I get it. But when you work with a network that completely shows you in a way that is just not true and i got phone calls like what well, what people didn't even know me it's like that didn't uh, that, uh, they cut that 
the, the scene was choppy. What really happened? So, should you do a reality show? Depends on your motivation. If you want to get followers, you want to get money, you want to get exposure, then I'll by all means do that. But I, I tell you now, um, today is Thursday, November the 12th. I will not do any reality show to bring awareness and to help. Anything of that nature that I do is going to be strictly about me because I felt like I was used. I felt like they had an opportunity to really bring awareness and to show that I communicated these things with them and to show that I was brought on to be a part of season six of 60 Days In because I had celiac disease, but yet they did not accurately depict what happened. It pisses me off. And if you don't want to be pissed off too, and you don't want to have your story manipulated, then don't go. Don't go. Benefits. I met some awesome and amazing people. I met a crazy batshit ass person too, but one out of, of the 10, 11 of us that I met is not bad. Not bad. I feel stupid. I feel stupid because I've allowed myself to be vulnerable to try to bring awareness so other people would not have to deal with the things that go on in the jail, especially if you have an autoimmune disease, an allergy, or an illness. I feel like my story was manipulated for humor. And although I, I do consider myself a comedian, my health is not a fucking joke. Let me just say that again. My health is not a fucking joke. And the reason why I volunteered to be a season six participant on 60 Days In is because I wanted to help the pregnant women because unfortunately, <sighs> celiac has taken away motherhood from me. I did that. I did a lot of amazing and great things. I've talked to some of the inmates and some of the staff. But when you allow other people to tell your story, it's up to their interpretation. So again, I thank them because now I am working on some additional projects to bring awareness, not manipulated awareness. So, 60 Days In is real. There's no script, but the editing, the editing is creative as hell. They can make it whatever they want. There were times when I looked at the show where I went in with my hair like, no, I went in with my hair straight and I left with my hair curly. There were times I would look at a situation and they chopped it so where I had straight hair in some of the conversation and curly hair in the others. Other videos I've addressed, people said, this editing of Shanice is getting ridiculous. Yeah, I know. So, um, my story will be heard. And it will be heard in a way that can help people. Yes, there have been changes made at the jail because of me being there raising hell. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I said I'm not a complainer. But I can raise some hell if some stuff ain't right. They know that. They know that. They've seen my YouTube page. They've been on my Facebook. They, they, they had a very intimate knowledge of the type of person that I am, and I'm not quiet. <laughs> so that's why I was selected. However, they manipulated the reason, the very reason why I was chosen. They manipulated it to make it look like something else. And I'm really, I'm getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of black women being portrayed in that way. It's another video I did where I talked about, uh, I think it's Mary Crosby on one of the housewives that married a grandfather. Like we have educated, beautiful, successful, professional black women that are out here doing great things, not marrying and having sex with their grandpa. 
Why are we glorifying that? Why is it that when black women get on a show or a reality show, it has to be loud, dramatic, 